Hey guys and welcome back, Lucian here with you again like always back in my AE2 test world and there's something that had bothered me the last few weeks and I wanted to come into the test world to kind of iron it out and figure out how it actually worked and that was the coprocessor from the auto crafting portion of AE2. So I'm bringing you along this little journey and I think I've got it worked out and got a better understanding and I want to kind of show you what I've found. So I have kind of a, just a basic setup right here just uh, my my usual ME controller cube, uh, some 20k of total crafting storage, and then I have an interface with a molecular assembler on each face. And you also notice that the cable does not actually have to be touching the interface itself to be able to share power and, and, and uh, the actual communication, the channel if you will. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some non-scientific research and hopefully come up with a conclusion by the end of the video. So what we're going to be looking for is how long it takes to make a 64K storage cell. Because that's one of the most more complex things to make just from AE2. Now we, I mean, I'm in the Direwolf 20 pack, so there's a few other things that I could get in there to make more complex recipes, but the 64K just seem like it fit the theme. So we're going to do a first test run and this we're going to call our control. So I have my phone out and I'm going to time it on my phone and we're again it's not going to be this is going to be non-scientific and we're going to kind of see where we have. So you can see I just have bulk resources in here nothing's pre-crafted up. Um, I, I decided just to go ahead and throw the processors in there. I could set up an inscriber setup to do that but you know, I just didn't feel like it was necessary. So we have all the resources in here. You see got 20k of storage and I'm trying to hit the button just about the same time and we're going to see how long it takes for our control. Alright. As soon as I see it pop up I'm going to hit the stop button. Okay I got 10.85 seconds. So we'll just call it 10 seconds, so between 10 and 11 seconds to make a 64K store cell with this setup right here. Now there's other setups to set up to do this for the interface. Um, I've noticed in my videos, my A2 videos especially, that I've gotten a lot of comments lately about, hey, you can do it this way or you can do it that way. I will always maintain the stance that when, in my videos that this is just one way to do it. There are probably hundreds of other ways to do it that may be better, may be worse. I know there's other ways to do it. I don't need to see that on every video. So rant aside. All right, so let's let's do something else. So I'm gonna throw a crafting monitor in here, and then I'm gonna throw one coprocessor in there. Now, this multi-block always has to stay in a cube shape so for me to add a just one coprocessor. I have to have another block so the monitor works just fine. Alright, so let's do another test. Make sure I have all the resources in there. I do, and you'll see that the little tool tip that it does ha it is showing that the coprocessor is connected. Alright, let me get the phone back out and go. Six point eight six seconds is what I got. So that's quite a difference, you know, 40% or so different between the control, which no coprocessors, and this setup. So let's stretch it out a little further. Make sure we have all the resources again. We'll get rid of this. And we're going to run it one more time. Let's see, make sure we have all the resources. We do. You can see it does the same four coprocessors. Go. Five point nine six seconds. So very interesting. So what I think I think this is what the way I understand it is for each coprocessor that you add into your multi-block your crafting CPU if you will 
it allows the interface to access more than one assembler, molecular assembler, at a time. So from, I believe the way I, this works is, since I have four coprocessors and one, and then one multi-block storage, that it's accessing between four and five of these interfaces at one time doing the crafting operations. And you can see this is uh, that's my pattern terminal, where's my interface terminal, there it is. And you can see how I have it set up here. So maybe this one is going to one assembler, this is going to the next assembler, this one's going to a third assembler. So I think that's the way it's working. So you may have to redesign some of your bases or some of your setups if you want the ultimate crafting speed. Now since there's only six interfaces here, or six molecular assemblers, I don't know if adding more coprocessors will make a difference. But, you know, in the name of science, let's do it. We have all the resources we need. We do. Alright, let me get the phone back out. Clear it. Go. Five point nine nine. Five point nine one. So it looks like we're right at that five to six second mark. But I think that since to make four Ks you need parts from the one K operation, I think you can't do do it much quicker than that. But that's a significant change. That's a a fifty percent reduction compared to no coprocessors at all. So very interesting. It makes me kind of uh, maybe second guess my my auto crafting system in my single player or my uh, my multiplayer series. So let me know what your thoughts. Let me see. Let me know if you want me to do anything more AE2 related. I love doing AE2 videos. This gets lots of good response on the channel, and they're fun to do. So have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. Be sure to check out the rest of the playlist for the AE2. I'll see you guys soon.